All right, welcome to the uh, April 4th, 4th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we have uh, one public hearing, and then from there we're going to our regular meeting. And this basically is a continuation from our um, last meeting. And the, uh, under it was the old business where we had uh, April Pandora, owner of Even Urban Gardens LLC, is requesting a text amendment definition for market garden. Um, I know at the last meeting the mayor was not present. Chris is not here today. And I didn't know if you wanted to just give a brief outline of what you're requesting or if there's any questions on the garden. What? Oh, let me let me do the roll call first, okay? Thanks. Go ahead, Jerry. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman Gears here. Uh, John Brown here. Mayor Williams here. Uh, Chris Brown did call and told us that he would not be able to be here, so I'll right. a motion. Okay. Thank you. If you want to. Uh, come up in case because we had a chance to review stuff in case there's any other questions concerns before we close the public hearing okay okay you're on sit on yeah okay fine okay so for folks that weren't here in february what we are is we are a urban market garden we're in our third year in our production in our business we use organic practices we currently grow on a half an acre that we lease in the city of cincinnati uh, from a private landowner and we're looking to purchase land so that we have long-term sustainability for our crops which are mostly herbs and vegetables a lot of perennial herbs and some berries and fruits so we found a lot in Lawn Avenue that the land bank owns. We've gone through their extensive venting process, which takes two months. Uh, we were approved by the Hamilton County Land Reutilization Corporation, which is the land bank. So they want us to purchase the property, but they said we need to go through the city of Norwood because currently agriculture is only permitted as a secondary use if there is a house on the property. There is no house on the property, so the interpretation is that uh, agriculture cannot be done as a primary use on the vacant land. So we are asking uh, the city of Norwood to reconsider that and to allow market gardens uh, on vacant land. Um, right now it's looking more like a conditional use, which means we'd have to go to uh, BZA zoning and, and they can put whatever stipulations they would want. Everything is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. And so that's the summary of it. Okay. Any questions from? Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> uh, with that being in a uh, uh, public hearing, do we have anyone who wants to speak in favor of the change? Anyone who would want to speak in favor of the change? All right. Do we have anyone who would uh, like to speak against a change? Do we have anyone who would like to speak against a change? Okay, since we had no one come uh, forth on either one, then. Uh, I would, uh, we have no new business. Uh, I would uh, ask that we have a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second. Right. We have a second that. Uh, you want to call the roll, Jerry, please? Uh, Mayor Williams? Yes. Uh, John Brown? Yes. Chairman Gears? Yes. All right. Thank yous. The, uh, <clears throat> we'll move into our normal regular meeting. And uh, can we do the roll call for that, please? Uh, Mayor Williams? Here. Chairman Gears? Here. Uh, John Brown? Here. And Chris Brown, like I said earlier, did call in and uh, is, uh, said he would not be able to right. make the meeting. Thank you. What we have in our packet underneath old business, uh, well, we have the minutes. Uh, uh, from our February 7th meeting. Uh, I'll make a motion that the minutes be accepted as read right. with no 
uh, additions or corrections. And I'll second that since uh, we were the two here present, since Chris isn't here. Um, do you want to call the roll on that, please, Jerry? Yes. Chairman Gears? Yes. Uh, John Brown? Yes. Mayor Williams? Abstain. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Under uh, old business, we have uh, one piece of business. We have uh, April Pandora, owner of Even Eden Urban Gardens LLC, is requesting a text amendment definition for market garden. Uh, I open it up, up for any discussion, questions, uh, concerns, or motions. Um, Greg, is there anything you want to can add on this? Uh, Greg Orris, Planning Department. Um, as we discussed last time, uh, I think we wanted to take a further review and take a month to sort of look this over. Um, I think it was leaning towards the uh, potential of a conditional use and then there was the discussion of whether it would be a conditional use in residential or a conditional use in residential commercial um, and general business the it was also requested that we look into sort of provisions that were done from other communities and that's if you look on the back of your staff report right there of the recommendation uh, there's the first one which is number one the definition um, number two uh, potentially allow the market garden as a conditional use that means it would be reviewed and other conditions could be put on from the DZA um, and third there's a list of sort of provisions that would go along with the market garden uh, being allowed so uh, if we want to read through these uh, I, I can do that um, the they said the market garden shall not affect the uh, residential feel of the neighborhood. The market garden shall not generate pedestrian or vehicular traffic substantially greater than that normally generated by residential activities in the surrounding area. No more than two vehicles shall be parked on site, including those parked within enclosed structure. Mechanicized, me mechanicalized equipment similar in scale to that designed for household use shall be permitted to prepare the land between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Use of larger uh, mechanical farm equipment is prohibited. Um, the market garden shall be so conducted as to not cause offensive or objectionable noise, vibration, smoke, odors, humidity, heat, cold, glare, dust, dirt, or electrical disturbance, which is perceptible by the average person at or beyond any lot line uh, contained in the market garden. Uh, shipment and delivery of products or supplies shall be limited between 7 uh, a.m. and 7 p.m. and shall occur only in, the, in single rear axle straight trucks or smaller vehicles normally used to serve residential neighborhoods. Chemical and fertilizer use shall not exceed that typical in residential activity. Rodents, vermin, and insects shall not exceed that typical in residential areas. Overhead lights shall be prohibited. Teaching of organized classes totaling more than 10 persons at a time shall be prohibited. Signs in residential districts shall follow the residential sign standards and selling of vegetable on site shall be prohibited and accessory structures shall be constructed to the satisfaction of the Board of Zoning Appeals. So um, I know there's quite a few of them here, but I think it addressed at least some of the concerns of the, the commissions that was brought up to make sure that it doesn't exceed the use in a residential district. Okay, I have <clears throat> on uh, item number two. Yeah. Uh, where it says no more than two vehicles shall be parked on site. Um, if I remember from our last meeting, there was going to be no parking on site because there's no curb cuts. Uh, and if there was going to be, you'd have to have a curb cut, plus you'd have to have a uh, paid parking area to park the vehicles on. So just. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if the way I would read it, the way it is right here, I would, in the same way, excluding uh, those parked in an enclosed structure, or well, we're not allowing any enclosed structure. So um, I, I don't know if that suggests or could come back to suggest that uh, 
Yeah, well, you can park two vehicles on an unpaved area, and uh, well, we can park them in a structure. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that needs to be. Uh, that's just my input on that, or my two cents worth on that. And I think we can use that. We can either switch the language that no vehicles can be parked on site. It, that's this is very site specific on this one. This would be if there's another site, let's say that already has a driveway that's already there that you could park on site. Where this one, uh, part of the conditions of the BZA or a recommendation of it could be that there's no curb cuts uh, or no additional driveway access to the site. So mm -hmm. there's two different ways that I think that could be handled. Okay. But we could make it a condition. It, it would be one of those that, let's say there was a driveway. I understand, but, but being conditional, that would be where each individual place would come up. But this is more general, where if we're going to make this a conditional site, yeah. then it needs to be conditional. Yeah, conditional. I mean, on, on that site specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I really appreciate everybody's efforts, and I, and I watched the tape of the last meeting. <clears throat> I'm looking at this. This doesn't seem, this seems to be a lot of trouble for a garden. Uh, th there could be a lot of regulations that who's going to enforce them, who's going to check on it, one of the complaints going to come in. And then we go from there is we have other properties and everything. Why are we, are, are we open up Pandora's box? Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I think there's, there's a partial interest in part of those properties up there as it stands that we're, we're going to do some research into. And I, I'm not so sure that we're not into an area where it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of land in sitting at city of Cincinnati. There's plenty of land in the county. There's plenty of land available. I, I just, I'm not starting to, I'm starting to wonder if we're just not going to make it more difficult than what it should be. And it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. Now, that's just my thought. And I'm concerned about the other properties around and where do we draw the line? If we put a garden up there, somebody else wants to put a garden down there. Somebody will want to put a garden over there. That's my property. Why can't I do it? We're going to do it over here and we're not probably, and I'm not so sure we're making it more difficult than, than what it's worth. And if we're not opening Pandora's boxes. Just my thought. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with the entire concept of what you're doing. I just don't agree with it in a residential area. Uh, if it was <clears throat> like right now, you're in a park, right? Aren't you in like in North? Or you've got two places: one in Pleasant Ridge and one in another place. Both are in residential areas. They're in residential areas. Okay. This, it's my opinion. I don't think it belongs in a residential area. It's, uh, We're at in a residential area, if I may ask, in Pleasant Ridge. I have one off Montgomery that's very, very small. And then I have a half an acre down in Spring Grove Village. I respect your opinions and your concerns, but what you have to understand is this land has been vacant for seven years, is owned by the land bank, and the land bank is trying to get a business to develop it, and we are a business that can do that. You know, urban agriculture is uh, helping to have local food in the community. We serve, we serve the Norwood residents. We sell at their farmer's market. Their community garden that is on Williams Avenue in Ellesmere, I wrote the plans for that. I pitched it at a PTA meeting when I lived in Norwood four years ago and gave it to Jeannie, and Jeannie pushed it to Norwood. That was my idea. I have good ideas. And if they are implemented, they will be successful. Whether you choose to recommend this or not, that's on you guys. But I feel that this is a real opportunity that, you know, if it's not pushed forward, you know, would be very unfortunate. And as far as you, Mr. Williams, there is land, and we have been looking for two years, but we are competing with people building houses. We are competing with large companies that can pay $60,000 for land. That's not something we can do being a smaller business. Well, there's also a possibility down 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 the line that that property could also sell. I mean, so, but like I said, it's it's uh, it, the the Williams Avenue thing was more or less for a neighborhood and 
uh, for the kids at Williams Avenue School. That that was the concept if I, as I understood it because they had a chef down there working to teach the kids on, on, the, on the growing of the product and then the transferring the product to the table. That was it. My understanding of it was it was a very, it was an educational thing and it wasn't necessarily all food. So that that was to me is, is a difference. So it is a different format. We are running this as a business. We do have a production on site. Um, I did have a background in sustainable agriculture. I study academically. I've worked on four other type of growing operations, all of them organically grown. But you know, to just have land that's sitting there vacant that could be utilized, that could be developed, that could be owned. You know, we are legally bound if we develop this by the Hamilton County Land Utilization Corporation. We have monthly reports that come in. They come out to the site. I mean, they're closely monitoring. So, you know, when you're talking about this isn't just somebody that has an idea. You know, we're already doing this. We're already selling this. You can talk to Jeannie. You know, we're at the farmer's market. We are the consistent you know, producer there that sells. So I understand your concerns with the community, but this is an extremely small scale operation. So um, I think the suggestions that the planning has put forward uh, and the conditional use would be ideal. That way, if there are things uh, on the property, they can be addressed on a case by case basis. Gary, do you have any thoughts? Um, well, I've met with April uh, early on, and uh, I think the concept is good, um, but I have a real hard time taking land that can be utilized for new housing stock and dedicating it to this. Um, I'm kind of on the same page as John when we talk about that in the last meeting. Um, I, I just think the land could be better utilized. Okay. And why hasn't it been if it's been sitting for seven years? There's been no offers. I mean, you have to let the bird in hand is worth two in the bush. I just think, you know, there is, yeah, there is a little bit of risk, but I think we need to keep in perspective the opportunity that is at hand. You have a business that has resources, that has money. You know, we're not getting it for free. We have to buy it from the land bank. It's going to be under a legal contract from the land bank to develop this and to follow through, or we lose the land. You know, that's going to own it, that's going to pay the taxes on it, that's going to build in the community, that's going to be another business, that's going to make the community more livable, that people want to come here and live because there's progress, because Norwood is open-minded to new things. And, and I have a huge value to the neighborhood. I understand that, but so. right now we're moving into the process of we, for whatever reason, the city ended up paying taxes on property on lots that we own, and we're in the process of because we're required, if I say anything, Mr. Law Director, please fill in and correct me, that that we're, we're, we're in the process of paying taxes that we, we are required to pay. Once those taxes are paid off, then the land can be, can be disposed of, such as, and we are also in the discussion, we had one vacant lot where a house is, is being built on it, a really nice house, and we are now going to be looking at uh, design functions for vacant lots and, and stuff like that where single family homes are going to go in. Mm -hmm. And this could be, and this has been a long time coming, so this could be one of those parcels of property that two homes con conforming to the neighborhood could be uh, uh, built and uh, the property could be acquired and built on. So that's, you know, and you're right, it sat for seven years. There was a lot of legal reasons for that, but it did sit for seven years. And I would rather be honest with you, take the time, wait, if you look at the, like the community garden in Williams and uh, Regent Ellesmere, it's a different, it's a different story. That's, that's a corner lot that, that the kids use and, and the kids are educated on. These, that's a different animal than the other lots that are spread throughout the city that the law department's been working on to make sure that we get those taxes paid off so those lots can be transferred to independent builders to put homes on there that conform with the neighborhood. That's the intent of the whole thing. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Is there uh, anyone want to make a motion? I'll move that it be denied. I'll second. 
All right. Any discussion? All right. Would you uh, take a vote, uh, Gary? Uh, yes. Uh, Mayor Williams? Yes. Uh, John Brown? Yes. Uh, Chairman Gears? Yes. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, April. Uh, underneath new business, we have a uh, general discussion of the residential design guidelines. Uh, has anyone had an opportunity to look it over? Uh, asked any questions or, uh, you know, we can take it with us uh, again and uh, review it uh, for next month. Yeah. Greg, do you have anything? However, please. If I can discuss it or. Yeah, that's it, fine. However. If you want to, okay. just take a kind of give us a general update. Um, I think it was a number of months back, uh, specifically uh, Chris Brown, uh, one of the members of the commission, had brought up the infill housing uh, that's going on and the housing market uh, within the city of Norwood and just what the mayor had discussed that uh, some of these dormant lots are uh, now being uh, infilled with housing. Um, and I think what we are trying to do is make sure that the residential uh, development fit in with the character of the historic homes that were there. Um, so this is a, uh, an attempt to uh, take the path of least resistance like we, we did with the uh, zoning code for the commercial lots to set some standards so that uh, the city is protected um, if the new house comes in and create some standards with it. So you'll see there's numerous sections that create additional definitions. Um, and then also if you look through, you'll see these tables that we have similar to our general business district and office that was requested from the, the building department. They're just a lot easier to read um, and utilize, I, I think. But, I think they've been a benefit. Um, they also don't do the telescoping, which you now see in that. So if you look at the first pages of your document on here, kind of that, the one that says R1 residential, yes. you'll, you'll see that some of that is crossed out. And I think the carry turn out probably the most recent like would, color yeah, one. I think so. I think they put it on everybody's desk. Okay. Well, we have one from uh, <clears throat> the last month. Yeah, I think the, but the I see there's some changes. Yes, the newest, so we don't need this one. Yes, I would get rid of that one and okay. use the newest, newer one that's in color, which I think makes it much easier to read. For, mm -hmm. And has been, like I said, um, between Mark and I, the building department and the law department, we've been um, vetting it and just increasingly changing it as time goes on to make it better. Just. I would just say the copy I know I have is not in color. Hmm. The most recent one we just got. Correct. Okay. Okay. How can you look? There it goes. All right. Yes, it's this one. This one. This yeah, one. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's the one without the diagram. All right. Very Perfect. good. There it is. Perfect. Okay. I think that makes it much easier yes. to read because yes. uh, you see the cross out language yeah. on there. So what it, it, the first part of this, if you're we're all on that R1131, uh, it pretty much just crosses out the language that's uh, there and puts it on these tables. So that is purely, while we're doing it, just a logistics thing for the, the department there. Um, and then as we go through here, what it does, once you start to get into the color photos, mm -hmm. it starts to the residential design standards. And so, like I said, uh, Mark and I really went through and we used a, a longer document and existing language, which is one thing that we try to, to do is use existing language because that means it's been vetted and gone through the courts and uh, let other people do the battles here so that we don't, the last right. thing you want to do is be the test subject on the zoning code. You want it to be 
thoroughly vetted through other uh, uh, municipalities. So really it just kind of goes to the different standards that are there. It talks about standards for corner lots, um, talks about standards for public and private space, uh, that's the, in between the road and the front of the house. Um, gives some stipulations on uh, raised porches, stoops and lawns, landscaping, utilities, building heights, building materials, um, roof lines, parapets, front porches, stoops, balconies, window proportions, and porch railing. So if you took out the photos in it, I mean, I'm, we're probably talking three, four pages tops worth of standards in here. And what's good about this, this is similar to how we did the commercial. They set the standards that are there that if you can come in and come in and write, and you're free to go ahead and do it. But let's say someone comes in with a house that is great and we don't know about it, can easily then go through the BZA. And I think the way to do it would be as a single variance through that as opposed to a potentially a series of variances, okay. um, just depending on the structure of the house. And so really the one that uh, was more the battle between the building department and sort of Chris and he had sent the, the letter, I think that, or the email that was gotten today, was really more towards that, uh, these parking. So some of the last pages of, of the document, which is the parking standards. And that really has to do with garages in the front. And what the garages in the front should look like. Um, and I think that's pretty much just the, the parking without alley standards that's on there. So that discusses uh, ways to do that. He's interested in having it not be a certain percentage of the front of the structure and that it be offset by a foot back behind there. I think the building department uh, thought that was a potentially a little strict or a little restrictive for houses. So as you review it, um, I think those are the, the tug and war between the two, the two sides. All right. We have just one parking with we do have two, two sides in that argument. Wow. Everything We've else. We've never had that before. <laughs> yes. Everything else, I think, is pretty well self explanatory. And uh, that's where Mark and I have really like, vetted it down to like the basic nubs. That's the one that I, I think is the back. So it would really be the uh, chapter 1153 is one we need okay. to really, so really look into. Okay. I think go over with, with Jerry, go over with um, <coughs> Chris. And okay. Mark and by myself, or you know, those are the really the ones. Okay. Well, give me the thumbnail sketch. I mean, to save me some time, just <clears throat> uh, lay it lay it out for me. What, what what are the differences? One of the things I I, I wanted to ask is, uh, uh, we it would seem to me one of the things that I read was the grading of the land. Well, I don't know how you can change the grading of the land. The grading of land, to me, would have to say uh, match the, the surrounding area. I mean, you obviously you couldn't, so you, you feel that would be part of it, that we'd have to require that they change the grading of the land or it has to conform with adjoining properties. That Which would one, be, yeah, I can quickly kind of explain that. And he had that in his email. That's in that unique situation where you see the they're, they're either there's a depression or a grade change in the land where they put the garage underneath, so that it goes up under the hill and the garage goes underneath. And you see some existing homes that are there, or the garage actually goes down and the house is on the level of it but it goes down into that. And it, it's stipula stipulated as parking with difficult conditions, topography. Excuse me. Keith, could, could you sure. please? Yeah. So I don't, I, I keep looking at you and I know you want to say something, so I would prefer. <laughs> uh, no, I need, you know. This we, is where we're talking about, it's where the garage is kind of in the basement. Right. Is that saying it's allowed or wouldn't it's be? It's allowed. It is allowed. And yeah. the garage would be in the front. Yes, the garage would be in the front. It's very similar to, to a, a lot of properties that we see. I think there's even some on Montgomery Road and other areas like that, yeah. that they have the garage. Bar the, it just allows it and yeah. says that that's, that's okay. fine. It just gives a couple common sense things that you can't change the grade to make that situation. I know. Right, I, I, I have a question about, and 
the vacant lot on Quatman Avenue, up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good example, Jim. Could that be dug out and a garage put in? Potentially. You know the lot I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. You need a cable car to get up there. <laughs> yeah. I think that, yeah, that's a little one that's a little different. I mean, yeah, because... Unless I don't think that has access off of Fenway, it didn't, didn't go down. No, it didn't go down that far. But it would make sense to put an underground garage, you know, mm -hmm. a lower level, because by the time you dig it out, John, you know, yeah, you're right. That's and a good just, spot for it. And now it's red. It's lots with the back line at least 15 feet higher, so that would be that would qualify with it. Then the front line may locate the garage in the basement of a street facing facade of the building. So that's just kind of what you're talking about. And this just says the garage door shall be located to one side of the street facing facade. And that just means so that it's you're not one of those that that's all it is, is the garage as you pull in. So you have that lot and then instead you just have a garage. And the whole bottom first floor of the house is a garage. And then the second and third floor is your actual home. That's what it's trying to protect against. And that's kind of what the stipulations are, is that so that we're, that the houses, and that's really what the, the back and forth with it is, and Chris's main point that he had in that email, that the front of the house is not dominated by a garage, which I think feels instead of the urban environment that we have here, it gives it more into like a suburban, all of a sudden you've got a suburban house plopped in the middle of sort of these early 1900s homes. Well, I mean, I understand that. So I live in a one-four brick. Okay, so you're not going to put a one-four brick over on Ashland, you know. So I, I understand that. But what if 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 this the rule or standard is that it must conform with the neighborhood or the adjoining properties? That would preface it, and then the rest, uh, Keith would. Would it be an interpretation of the architectural design? And if that's an interpretation of the architectural design, who makes that decision? I mean, because if, if, it's, if it's a standard, a, a standard, am I correct in saying a standard is a guideline? It, or is it, it's not, it's not as firm as a rule or is it sort of in, in quasi in between if it says shall yeah if it says shall it means it's supposed to meet that's required uh, if it does it may or should oh, I like the law yeah. okay. mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so I guess what I'm looking at is is some some sort of simplicity because we have a tendency people in our area have a tendency to take something easy and make it difficult so I guess what I'm saying is what's the easiest the best way for the community, but also <coughs> the best way for the building department, the law department, to move these projects further without impeding progress. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and my question on this, I, hello, at 11:53:30, the last section in here, yeah. I could not figure out what we were trying to do and i understand the idea that we want to match we want you know if a new house comes in and if it's on cathedral we want it to look like on cathedral and have a garage you know you drive straight in the garages under the house if it's on you know if, if it's on ashland then it's it's going to look different if it's down on hopkins as you go down the hill on hopkins well there's going to be i can understand there being different i just couldn't understand like how much of this was required and you know the thing about the four feet it's supposed to be four feet underground it's like well if i'm building a house on carter and everything's flat well, this, does that mean that you have to sink the garage in the backyard four feet down so that's the thing so this is a rare case scenario um the one at the bottom i think what we should do is read through the one above it this is your everyday one dealing with garages. This just happens to be one with how many places is the back lot line 15 feet higher than the front lot line? Which right, I think that's so, and, so. We're talking about 30 homes on Borough. I know yeah. the south side of the street. Yeah, so they could have yeah. that would fit with the garage underneath and the, uh, under on the side there. And I think you have some in the neighborhood that have. Yeah. The, the garage under, isn't even yeah. Yours. My garage is under yeah, the house. Yeah, so yours would be as of right by this language. Yeah. If if I could 
jump in if I sure. Uh, I, and Greg and I haven't talked, so I don't want to hit him on the, on the blind on this. But I, Mark and I looked over some of this, and I just haven't had a talk, opportunity to talk with Greg on. This. But I have more issues than just Chapter One One Five Three. I have some issues of the whole document itself. There's a lot of this in this document that I don't necessarily agree with. Okay. And I think it makes it too restrictive to build. I understand the concept of doing this, and I think there's some good aspects in here. And again, I don't want to hit Greg because I haven't had a chance to talk with Greg on this. So, um, right. but there are some issues in here that I just don't think are necessary, and I think are too restrictive. All right. Well, I mean, well, this is not new. Greg and I did talk. I mean, first of all, the secondary dwelling units, I don't like it at all. I, I actually strike the whole page. I don't think we should be doing that. And, and, that's and, and we, we and I, he and I talked. I said, hey, Jerry hasn't seen this yet. I don't think he's going to like it either. We have worked real hard to not increase our number of dwelling units in this city to allow somebody to put one, you know, put a mother-in-law. I mean, if you want to put a mother-in-law suite within the confines of the house, that's one thing. But if you want to allow somebody to build a, you know, that's on top of the garage. I think that's a, to me, that's a whole separate discussion that I haven't even touched on. Right. With it is the secondary dwelling unit yeah. on that. Well, Jerry and I went all through this, and we, quite frankly, we struck a bunch of this out. That, that I, th I agree with Jerry; it's going to be too restrictive. But again, it, Part Greg, Greg hasn't one. had the opportunity yeah. to freaking right. 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 You guys need an opportunity because it's not fair. Right. It's not fair to right. Greg with this right now. But so but that's why I think it's good we're discussing it, so we, as a planning commission, know there's got to be more outside discussions to right. work this all together. Yeah, because there's so many variables, and, and like I said, in Norwood, boy, if we can if we can figure out a way to start a fight, we will. And and this <laughs> this thing is going to start a fight, and so it, there has to be some clarification, and there really has to be some community involvement in this one. I'm not one of those ones that the community should vote on every issue, but this is one I believe that it's critical because I might have a few questions, you, but there are residents out there that you know that may look at it a different area for example like for me if you're talking about garages and everything there's there's got a lot of variables the the, the topography of the lot the width of the lot mm -hmm. you know and if uh if you take a, a a vacant lot now where there was a home there that was removed with that size a lot would could a home even be built there? And are we self-defeating by saying there was a home there once, it's now gone, but according to this, you can't put a home there. I mean, so there's there's got to be... If I could read, if we can read through uh, 1153.29, oh, right, right there, and look at what we've gone through, and we've tried to make these as sensible as possible here. And this, to me, was the compromise between what Chris, Chris would like to go further if he was here than what we have written here, and this is the compromise that we had here. So ideally, garage doors should not directly face on the streets. For lots without access to an alley, garages should be located to the rear, or Garages should be located to the rear of the lot behind the facade of the building. This ensures that the public streetscape is dominated by pedestrian scale structures like porch stoops and landscaping. So we're saying have a driveway to the side like the photo there. If that's not possible, then it says um, the street facing garage door shall be built to limit the overall massing of the garage door, which means so it doesn't take up the whole structure. Decorative elements such as false door hinges, molding, detail, and windows shall be installed to break up the monolithic appearance of standard garage doors. A single door, two garages, a single door, two garage that fits two cars. Yes. You got the suburban one that just looks like a suburban garage door stuck on floral. Imagine that, I guess, is what we're saying. Shall okay. be built to resemble two individual doors using hardware, molding, details, and glass. And there's a photo of that kind of right here. We're just saying if you do build a double garage door, to let's match it in with the character of the neighborhood. So exactly like in my neighborhood, it's in my neighborhood, it's mostly one floor plans, 
brick, to, you know, three bedroom, three. And I have down to the driveway with two garage doors. So to make that look like the fancy black hinges and all that, that would look out of place. Yeah. It would. It was so mm -hmm. so you could you basically could vary the garage doors from neighbor to neighborhood. That's what I'm saying by saying conformity to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I. No, Chris was shooting for the photo that you see on the, the right there that it's offset five foot back from the front facade. Okay. So this was attempting to be. No, oh, okay. Was attempting yeah. to meet uh -huh. the middle ground. So I'm not sure even Chris would be happy with this suggestion because that's what he had specifically said in his email. So this is where it was trying to find the middle ground between where the voting department was coming from by still allowing like on uh, the new house that on uh, Grove. Grove where it has the front door uh, but adding some architectural detail on that door to break up the massing of it. And if you look at the rest of the house it fits in right directly with its neighbors which it talks about into here that shall not be more than one story plus or minus the neighbor houses so that you don't have a, a towering house next to your, the ranch style houses in your neighborhood so that it sticks with that character. So there are provisions in inside this part right here that talk about scale and massing so that it fits in with the neighborhood. I can't. Go ahead. <coughs> okay. Um, this is one of the items that I had actually struck out because I thought I just think that, that it's too restrictive. I think if you look at the, and I understand where Chris is coming from, and I know that they're trying to make it a happy medium here, but to me, requiring somebody to put windows on a garage or to make it look like a carriage house rather than just giving them the option to put a <coughs> garage door on it, you're probably adding three thousand dollars to the house to the garage door itself. I mean, to me, it's just too restrictive. You know, it, 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 can I go counter on that? <clears throat> in my neighborhood, I wouldn't care. I, you know, it's a plain garage door. I wouldn't care. It matches everything else. Now, if I owned a big, if I was fortunate enough to live in one of the presidential streets, mm -hmm. and say, you know, I may want somebody's house next to mine to mirror mine. I don't know, and so I guess what I'm getting at, I. Th oh. Well, that would I think would Tom. I agree with you. I think that would be, and John can probably attest to this as being a real estate agent. It's 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 letting the market determine what's going to be appropriate for each individual area. I mean, you're right. It may be more appropriate in a different area, like like over the Presidential Street. Maybe somebody wants to build a new house over there. They have fortune to find a lot. They want to build it and put these type of things in there and spend the money. And But to me, that's more of a market-driven thing rather than a design standard driven by the city. So that, I, that's just my opinion. I'll tell you, because I own a house that would fit. It's not on a presidential street, but it's just like the ones on the presidential. It's the same kind of design, mm -hmm. you know, that is... It, but my thinking is to focus on the garages, like the appearance of the garages, the idea that we're going to match what we have. The garages weren't built when the houses were. Well, the point. houses are all older than the garage because nobody had cars when those houses were built. Mm -hmm. And so the I don't think that there's a standard for garages is the hard thing. I think yeah. matching the standards for the yeah. houses and the idea of locating the garage. So it's, I mean, I get the idea. We don't want the whole front to be a garage. I mean, that, that garage door, that makes sense. But it's hard for me to like to find the design for garage doors that's yeah. going to be, it's actually going to match as far as, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, and, you know, my side of town, I don't know, it's maybe a, a third, less than half, I'd say, of the houses on my side of town have garages. Right. So, you know, the, it, it seems like an odd discussion, because, it, and you're right, because the neighborhoods are so very different mm -hmm. as you go from street to street that it's it's almost it's impossible to say. Space right. to have a side-loading garage. That's what this person right. is talking about. Ideally, it would be great you know, it's, that it's right there and it's on the side of the, this is the one where you only have that 40-foot frontage lot where the house takes up the if whole that, street, similar right. on Grove right there. And if they have a garage door, 
that's facing the street because that's one of the first things that we do here is oh I like that how, how why did you let that house with that all I see from that house is that garage door I got my house on floral or forest and the new house that's next to it I love it but all I see is the front door is that garage and this is just saying to put some architectural elements and I think three thousand I mean three thousand we've gotten the price back in the day three thousand is the cost of these whole doors right here the fancier doors on the one that we did that had a little bit of a carriage look so a regular garage door costs a thousand and maybe you're adding fifteen hundred or two thousand to the cost of a brand new house with it but that sets the tone for the development uh, well if you're just going to spend three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for a house what the heck's what, you know, now, oh, it's another three if i can ask this for my own clarification this is just for new buildings and new garages not existing mm -hmm. correct anything that exists is grandfathered okay there's, there's, there's a section in there we did it i think the most important part of this chris and i certainly don't agree on everything at all but uh, and, and greg and i agree on more than that but uh, <laughs> i think the most important thing is the scale we don't want to put a three-story on barlow but we don't want to put a ranch over on Spencer, either. that's what I said. Right. It's a big thing. Right. So we conforms to the neighborhood. Front porches, something we've been trying to get for years. Front porches should not look like this. They should look more period correct on these houses. And I don't care where they're in, whether they're on Arklow or whether they're on Floral. There's a style when those houses were built, and it's not a wooden deck. So, to me, those are the two biggest things. I I like the new house on Grove. It's a two-car garage. It's a front-load garage. It takes up two-thirds of the front of the house. Um, short of putting a, I mean, he could have built it standard. He could have put a 10-foot wide driveway that was 120 feet back to a two-car garage. He would have had no green space left, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So he has a very nice, safe, less water impervious driveway, and he retained the entire green space in the back of that house. So, I mean, I, personally, I like it. I mean, yeah, we've, I've talked to a couple people that didn't like it, but they're just, it's new to them. They've not seen. I think this is what's going to happen in Norwood. I think this is how they're going to build them. I, this, the second one is going to be built the same way, except he, the lot, well, the planning commission shortened the lot for him. This is the one on Delaware. Okay. Yeah, that was one where we uh, the cut eight feet off from yeah, the next. You cut eight feet off. Yeah, so his, his, he's going to do a tandem double deep garage, but it's going to be below the level of the house because he is up on a hill. But that hill was only, I don't know, eight, ten feet. About eight feet. Yeah, okay. something like that. I, I hear a couple of points. John, remember we, as a real estate agent, remember we talked in one of these meetings where eventually it's, you know, this city is, I believe, taking off and people are coming in they're getting bidding wars on house oh yeah there was a house fixed up on silver street everybody complained about it that house looks like it's brand new and went for it's seventy thousand dollars and and they're they're getting in bidding wars for houses around here now <clears throat> remember we had talked that i hope i remember right that eventually uh in other communities where somebody has come in and purchased two homes and taken them down mm -hmm. and then built a a, a bigger house, right? yeah, mm -hmm. a McMansion. <clears throat> so, in this particular case, like I said, I, I'm not ready to have community meetings for being. But could we entertain the, the possibility of having two ward councilmen get together and schedule a time where we could go to, like the high school auditorium and have a short presentation and, and give those council members the information first on what's proposed. Let those council members get with their community and see what their thoughts are. Not if we go for five ward council members, you know, you, so you'll be forever. A public wide city hearing. Yeah, for public yeah, wide, mm -hmm. yeah, for citywide public hearing. Right for for so, yeah in different for, locations. Two, yeah, we we could all have we could all have it at the high school, but it would be for two wards at a, at a time. Okay. 
bring two ward council members in and, and invite the members of those two wards plus a council, you know, a committee at large person and have them there and have this open discussion. If it's pro and con, that's good. Then, you know, try to keep it brief. You don't want to talk much, you know, like me. But, I mean, brief. And, and have them tell us what they think. I mean, you'll get people come up uh, and, and have their voice. And their concerns from each ward will be different. And can we, is it possible to tailor standards to a neighborhood? Could you tailor a standard to, to, you know, for the houses built in 63? Could you, you know, and let them come in and we'll talk about it, you know, a certain amount of time and get input. And then somehow we can come together and draft a document after we get all the input. Because I'm telling you, this is one area that I really believe. And like I said, remember Joe? Joe and I used to talk to certain individuals. They want to have a community meeting for everything. But this is one area that I think when you start talking about homes and and stuff like that, now you're talking really personal things. And that's that's what I would hope that we could move forward on and have get to high school, have two wards each time, and and have a discussion, let them come in, voice their opinion. Take notes, have everybody here, you know, yourself, you know, everybody here, and then have a brief discussion about it and then open it up. Give somebody give a brief discussion, so that would eliminate me. But we could have somebody give an overall description of what we're planning to do and what the possibilities are, and what do you think? And maybe the council people, if they still have ward meetings, could beforehand say, hey, this is what we're looking at, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. they, they could put it out, yeah. And, yeah. But, but we need as big a turnout as we can from if we have those two wards meet one week, two wards meet the next week, two more. Combine all that information and then try to come to a consensus to pass on to the bees here, or, you know, or the, uh, the council. Mm -hmm. and, and so that way the council gets it now they're briefed. They were at the meetings and they know what was said and they're ready to go. Do you want to do another meeting in house before we do that? Uh, yeah, I think we I think we need to with the law department get our ducks so, in a you, row. Tim, because we don't. Last thing I would hope is you know we, we would go to the uh, citizens and. Uh, I, hate to, I don't want to use the word be uh, not unified, but, you know, we, we really don't have a precise goal. Or Go with the final draft. The final yeah. draft, yeah. Right. Okay. I, I think we need to do that. I think it's a good idea to have the council representatives get involved. I mean, we can either do it at the high school or do it down at the community center or yeah. wherever. Or if they want to do it each individually, <laughs> each ward person. I mean... <clears throat> I think that's good input because if we tried to get everybody in here for a public hearing, mm -hmm. we'd most probably be here for a couple of days. <laughs> do you uh, want to I mean, have that meeting and bring it back to Planning Commission in May prior to doing any of that? Do what now? Have have the meeting in house yes. Right, yes. and then bring it back to you yes. before we. Oh, start yeah. with council. Oh yeah, and I think it'd be interesting to have Chris with it. Yeah, oh, you should make sure. Because I'm back be here too. I mean, he wants <clears throat> this was actually his original brainchild, and it's an interesting subject because you can go either way. You could come and just say, "Hey, sure. let's let anything come in." You could get these neat, like contemporary residential things that are modern and whatever. And some people like that look. Other people think that that doesn't fit. Right. With what their their image of Norwood, so I, I, I think you get a lot of 
varying opinions. But if there if there's difference of opinions, <clears throat> there's you know if, if we can come together to give them something to present to them. But if there's difference of opinion, there's nothing. I mean, there's difference of opinion on council all the time. So mm -hmm. there's really nothing wrong with it. If we come at them uniform, well, I agree with all robots. They're going to say you guys had your mind made up before you came here. <laughs> That's exactly what they'll say. But you really don't want to know what we think. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And if there's a difference, then there's a difference. Right. And we don't want planning commission doesn't want to report out. Here's the way we want to change the whole housing code right yeah. and then council get feedback and then well i don't know about this one you don't want to start it's better to start that discussion mm. at this level at base level to get yes. a better instead of going to who knows what might come out of that so and, and how that would all by go. then so by better. the time council gets it right they'll have read it five times exactly We're just looking for a minimal like i said uh, we took mm -hmm. a document that was a series of documents that were much bigger than this one many more stipulations and we're just trying to get a minimal amount of coverage to protect ourselves before something comes in that right. we're just like, whoa, and we have no provisions right now on the housing. Yeah. And you can come in with pretty much whatever you you want if it fits on the lot. And yeah. once this and I understand that. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Can I can I just what this is kind of a broader question, but my understanding was the, the eighty five zoning code, essentially no house in Nord was compliant with things like the setbacks and, and, and the requirements that were in there. It's like if anything, if any house broke down, you couldn't have rebuilt it the way it was already on the lot a because lot of more. that. And I know that we made some changes uh, over the last 15 years or so, but I'm just wondering if that if, if that's something that needs to be addressed so along the lines of, well, if you're on, you know, mills uh, when there is, you don't have 10 feet to set back from anything. Um, for example, I mean, if there's some, some provision that w would allow for the most most part, most lots to be built on without having to go to BZA. Well, there is already that kind of thing. The, the okay. building department can reduce the side yard setbacks by half, which is a tremendous help. You know, on a 25 foot lot, I don't know what you build on the 25 foot, <laughs> right. you know, but they're down there. <clears throat> So we could do that already. You don't want to reduce them down to nothing. I mean, that's for sure. Right. I was just just to but get But you could sense, reduce right? them, in, so. for example, from six or eight down to three or four. Okay. I thought that it, there's to some extent that had been addressed, and I. But yeah. if it hadn't really, then I wanted to. You know, this would be the time to take care of that. And that chart. So okay. if you want to review that. Yeah. Then All right. Yeah, the chart's redone. That table. I didn't it's study helpful. the chart. Sorry. Yeah, we did have one where we did like a um, non-conforming. Um, like residential and I uh, we made a provision uh, kind of on a non-conforming but we didn't see a deer park uh, for a non-conforming property um, we allow it if it got burnt down to the ground got destroyed over 60% you, know, you have that provision where you can't get built back <coughs> mm -hmm. if it was a residential house we'd allow that to get built back once if it got damaged over 60 percent okay not right. so we but would, i mean we for example that, but that's probably a right but there shouldn't be a problem like putting a, a similar for all for all the vacant lots we have now sh nobody should really have a problem putting back a house that's es essentially the same it right. may not the go back exactly now. where the other one was if the other one was like mine it was 14 inches off the property line no you couldn't put back yeah. right. but, but you, you can put back a house in, and meet setbacks say. okay all right. on all of them i think right. I, I would just say <clears throat> Go by Sherman and uh, Lawrence, and you'll never get a. You'll never get that one. Will never get built on. Right, right. And neither will Ellesmere and. and uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, there are some mm -hmm. exceptions that there's no way in yeah. earth. Ellesmere floor. On How they ever got a five-unit building with a grocery underneath it, I'll never know. Right. You look at that lot. And it's, yeah. yeah. It was all building. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, not so every there are lot's going to. A few, uh, right. I want to say, exceptions, but not many. I think most of the ones that we've taken down, we were just talking about how many have come down. I think we counted, what, 14? Yeah, at least. At least 14. Probably those are all mostly buildable. Yeah. 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 I mean, some of them, the, 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 the tough ones were, I think, the, what was the one that... Um, down here on section, that's a tough one. But uh, the one we had the store on. Oh, that yeah, Franklin and, Franklin and, and, and Cortland. Oh, yeah, no. right. yeah. yeah. yeah, I, I, that's I, smaller I, than this. I demolished that building. <laughs> I was the operator. <laughs> but yeah, those were tiny. That's back when I was a construction guy. <laughs> that was a tiny lot. That, that thing. Yeah. you could hardly build that outlet back. Really so, <clears throat> and, and the other thing, fresh in my mind, is once this is developed, this is going to be in effect for a long time, and I. I believe 
the eternal optimist, that this city is going to keep getting better and better and better and better. And and I think this this legislation or this standards will come more into play down the road. And so I think it's vitally important. So how how what's what's the goal now? Do we come to agreement on something and then start telling councilmen to set up the meetings? Yes. I, I think we that makes yeah. sense. Okay, do we do that for our May agenda. Yeah, we want to bring back a final draft for y'all to look at yes. at the May agenda and then at that point and have every the the in-house people here and so we could discuss it and see what we got. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's important enough, and it is serious enough. You just can't do this in, in, in one month and say, "Okay, here, oh, I agree. Let's mm. let's do it." Oh yeah. no! Yeah. yeah. If you read through it and see any provisions that yes, are, we can know, add. Uh, right. You know, at, let, let us know. I mean, I know Mark and I, Jerry, we never did get to meet there, no, but no. Um, we did try to go through and make it pragmatic. Mm -hmm. We cut a lot out. But, you know, not everybody's going to agree with everything. And, and I agree with Jerry. We shouldn't be too restrictive. But on the other hand, you don't want to just do nothing and I, let them build whatever they want. I agree 100%. And then, you that. know, now, personally, I like that modern house on Erie Avenue, but a lot of people don't. Have you seen it? It doesn't fit in with the neighborhood. It's, it's a big, have you seen it, Sean? You like it? The one over by, in, I guess you call it East Hyde Park? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't fit in with the neighborhood. No, not at all. <laughs> but it's not a historical district either, and we don't have any historical mm -hmm. districts. Mm -hmm. I like contemporary homes. I do too. I like it very well. But where the residents like it, I'm in plural. I, I don't know if that's what, what? something right. to decide. Right. You, you know, that's the, the public discussion. Well, but I mean, mm -hmm. see, this is, this is sometimes, here again. I know this is going to come to a shock to some, but we have other neighborhoods rather than the presidential district. Mm -hmm. I know that doesn't always come to the surface, but but we have other neighbors, neighborhoods that different in full, and and they care just as much about their neighborhood mm -hmm. as everybody else does, and unless somebody goes and asks them, how do you know? Because if they come back and say, well, you didn't ask me. Well, you know, but still, you, know, you have to give the opportunity for somebody to come up and say what they think. And then after, like Mr. Deer said, we, we take this and come and finalize it in May and set up the meeting. And then if we get an overwhelming consensus, you know, in each neighborhood, who knows? Maybe it can vary. Maybe it can change. You know, I don't know. But this is one of those ones that I... But 100% believe that we, it's almost mandatory that we involve somebody because when you start changing what can go in next door to them, now, throw one more problem up, then I'll shut up. <laughs> what happens if somebody comes in and takes one of these older homes, or one of these homes, and remodels it and totally changes it? If they make it look modern, if they have glass all over, if they have pieces of metal swinging around and they call it art. What do you do then? Well, I think we would want it to comply with those standards as well. Well, does this say, you know, if you take out, you're talking about we left part of a wall and replaced everything else in order to get around the zoning. Um, but I think ours would be, you know, if you've done this, what some, some percentage of the building is replaced, 60%, then, 60. 60%, then yeah. these standards, the new, you know, the new new construction standards would apply. No, but I'm saying, so, so they take a, a normal, the house and I'm gonna, I just bought it, and I wanna put $80,000 in it and I wanna remodel it. We'll change it from a single, or a two floor uh, to a ranch. Yeah. I want to take this house down, and I want to put. You we know, want those down. standards to protect that because. I mean, just, so you don't go in and just cut off the whole second floor. So, so now I've got a rent. Exactly. So if it's you could put a remodel job in there and and actually cause just as much trouble. So that's something else. I, I like to pose problems and let you guys solve them. John, to to kind of piggyback on what you're saying, let's look at the opposite. Say we got a ranch. 
Yeah. And somebody says, look, I, I, I've got a family. I want to go ahead and put another story on it. And I'm meeting the height requirements. Why can't I do that? Yeah, it's one story. Well, I think our mm -hmm. proposed standards say one story. You can go one story well, above or one story that's below. Kind of, that's, that's, then you're getting into, I know. you have to consider property rights, too. I mean, you really have that's to be true. careful on what you restrict. It depends on who you ask when it comes to whether you have to respect anyone's property rights. Well, yeah, you're right, Keith. Well, up in the land of ranches where the mayor and I live, there are some... Simple, there are some two stories. There are some two fan, two yeah, stories. There are. Right. Yes, there are. Right. Right. I mean, suppose and they don't look out of place. Says, I like steps. Not really. And we need to tear down our house, and I want to put Victoria in there. Now. But, I mean, it's an example. Okay. You suppose, you know, so... What do you do then? Then we go up to uh, Montgomery. Can just send Montgomery where they, they take the ranches down, maybe two or so lots, and mm -hmm. they've done it now. And there's a one stretch just off Montgomery Road, just above the Kroger there, and you turn off, I think, Deerfield Road, and they've done it almost through a whole stretch. So mm -hmm. now it all is. It's a totally different neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the other side of the coin. With that, is that good? Does that provide a lot of <coughs> neighborhood, or is that, you know, something that? So that's the, the, the catch twenty two of it. Mm -hmm. so Certainly a bigger tax base. With this, what we're trying to do with this is plan for the worst case scenario and give some provisions. We can always go through the variance process, like we we talk about through our commercial districts and all of that. We're, we're trying to do some level of protection for the city for the worst case scenario, and to avoid the biggest issues that could potentially come up. Because it, the fact of the matter is a lot of people won't care until all of a sudden something pops up and they'll say, where were you guys? Yep. Yeah. And we have nothing. What, what have you been That's doing? That's the best reason to have yeah, public something. meetings so that we've I, had discussions. With I agree. Right because no matter what somebody builds, somebody's not going to like it. I agree. One way or the other. So. Yeah, they're either going to be mad because uh, we're too restrictive and I can't believe they're not letting us do it, or they're going to be mad because something went up and they don't like it. Yep. So, you know, we're doing whatever. We got the input on which way we want to go with this. And so, yes, I okay. agree 100%. So are we in agreement then uh, <coughs> yeah, if we get yeah. together in house and yep. get something done yep. or work on it so we can have work on discuss it next month? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Yes. Thank you, Greg. Uh, <clears throat> anything else? Any other new business? And then uh, make a motion to excuse the absent member. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we hear a uh, motion to adjourn? Can I thank Keith and Greg very much for your input and, yes. and the time and go. effort that you put into it? Yes. I'll second the motion and to more. adjourn. And more. And more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have a vote? Uh, take a vote on that, please, Jerry. To yes. The meeting. Um, Mayor Williams. Yes. Chairman Gears. Yes. John Brown. Yes. Thank you.